Friends, uh, Stuart here. So sorry it's taken me a while to get back to uh, making some of these videos for you, but I'm going to work on a very brief uh, video of how to forecast uh, some, some cash flows from a project, right? Now this is going to be very simplified as most of these videos to this point have been and it's going to exclude the impact on taxes. That means that we're not going to look at it. Okay, so we start off in, in just very, very simple terms. We might look and say that a company has you know, certain sales, cost of goods sold. We have you know, a certain amount of depreciation that we could uh, depreciation. I cannot spell right now. Depreciation. Jeez. Um, you know, then we're going to have our gross margins. Um, and etc. Right. So then it gets down to our S G and A interest expense. Or first of all, I guess we're going to have our um, our EBIT, then our interest expense, then our taxes, then our net income. Right. Pretty simple. Now I'm just making a very simple um, income statement. And this could be for, you know, maybe like a friend of yours is, is starting up a little small business or something, and it's very, very simplified, right? Okay, so I'm, I'm not going to dive into recreating all this for a whole bunch of years, but let's just say that we have like 2008, 2000, I mean, 7, 2008, and we'll say we have uh, something like five years of data, right? Brings us up to 2011, the most recent uh, time period. And now let's just say over time, you know, this company started out with $100 in sales, right? And over time, we'll say that this company had been growing at uh, maybe 8% per year, something like that. So times 1.08. And, and again, let's just keep this really simple for right now. Um, so it's grown at 8% per year. And now we see that, I'm just going to, again... Uh, simplify this a little bit. We see that growth over time, right? Now, this would be in hypothetical terms. We would say that these are our actual numbers. So these are actuals, or we could also call them uh, our historical uh, numbers. And so going forward, we would say, well, let's do some pro forma statements. So pro forma, also known as a forecast, right? Now on this one account, right? So um, again, we're gonna not look at the the rest of these uh, for right now, but the 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 process is pretty much the same. Uh, let me just go ahead and get that formatted the same. Um, fill the series. So now we would say, okay, let's look at um, this time period over here to the right, the forecast, and we were saying, well, we want to know what is the future going to look like in this forecasted. Uh, time period. Okay, so here on the left hand side we have our 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 historical numbers and now we're saying we want to know what is the future going to look like. So maybe we start off we're saying very simple it's going to look like it has in the past. So it's going to look like uh, it's going to keep growing at 8% off into the future, right? It's 8% year over year growth, right? So that's that's actually growing uh, pretty pretty significantly um, over over time, right? And we could, you could map that out and map that out on a chart and see, you know, is is increasing, right? Just like that. Okay, so now maybe we say we want to look at a project, um, and and the project is going to have um, a let's just say it's going to make an impact of uh, a five percent increase, incremental increase on sales, incremental. All right. <clears throat> now what that would mean is, okay, we forecasted already what the future is going to look like. We want to know what that 5% incremental increase is going to be. So it's it's basically this times the 0 0.05. 0 0.05 is this 5%. Now you'll notice that what we did there, uh, what we didn't do is we didn't say let's take the past, right? So 2011 uh, times one point. 0 0.5, right? We didn't we didn't do that. We didn't do, uh, and these are just some common things I've seen people do. Uh, we didn't do something like uh, taking uh, this number uh, times 1.05. And the reason why we didn't do the 
first, the first one, you know, taking 2011 times 1.05 is because that would basically say we're growing slower than we are in the future. And that's, that's not what this project is doing. This project is saying that if we take it, we will get an, a 5% incremental um, increase in sales, right? That's just the, what this project is going to do. And so now if we say, well, we're going to take our forecast times 1.05, then we're saying that we're going to get this amount plus 5% as the incremental benefit. But what we're looking for is that key word. We're looking for that key word that's incremental. And so that incremental benefit here is just that 5%. So all it is is this number times 0 0.05. Now we probably would do that cleaner and put the 5% over here to the side, something like as in, you know, in, a, in an assumptions column, um, just to clean things up. And that makes it easier for the, for the person who's looking at your work to kind of uh, follow along. So we would just do that. Let's anchor it. Oops. Anchor it with F4, not F5. Um, and then, you know, we could, we could just copy over to the right. And we can see what's going to happen over time. So this is 5% of sales. This is 5% of sales. And so what we're saying is this company, as, a, as it is today, will increase at, at, 10, at 8% over time, right? So it's 8% is what we're saying uh, this company is already going to increase. You know, we don't have to do anything else. If we pursue this project, or maybe if we pursue this customer, or maybe if we pursue this geography, or this new product line, or whatever it is that we're pursuing, we're going to get 5% incremental increase in sales. And that's what's going to be reflected down here. And that's what's going to be important for you in analyzing the project, because let's just say hypothetically that this project is going to cost $25, right? And in, in time zero, right? So this is today is the end of 2011. We may, we have a decision to say, well, in periods one, two, three, four, five into the future, we've already forecasted and said, this is what the future is going to look like over five years. Well, we want to know what will this project be valued at right now? Let's just say that this company has something like, you know, our, our total interest-bearing debt is something like uh, I don't know forty dollars or you know forty dollars, and its equity is sixty dollars, right? So we know that we have a, a total asset or the value of the of the firm is a hundred dollars, and then let's let's just put some some cost uh, next to it. So we'll say that they're getting a a 5% is what they have to pay on their debt and their equity is, is 10%. And then we want to know what the weighted average cost of capital is and that's pretty easy, right? All we have to do is say, okay, well, it's going to be this number divided by this number, right? Times uh, here, right? Let's just go ahead and put that over here. Let's put that as the weighted component. And then we'll just do the same thing, right? Here, 60%. Uh, let me put the parentheses around times here. Okay, so some of that, pretty simple. So here we go. We got eight percent. That's our that's our cost of capital. All right. Let's put these numbers in parenthesis. parenthesis I mean, in percentage form. Okay, good. So now we know our cost of capital is eight percent. So we could just go through and say, well, what is the present value? Uh, present value of these, and we know that. This one is going to be 25, but we can do it mathematically. So it's going to be the present value formula is equal to the cash flow divided by 1 plus R. And here, this is our R. So let's just anchor that. And it's raised to the power of whatever time in the future it is of N, right? So it's just 25. And then we can just go to the right and copy that formula. Let's make it all look the same. So it's you know not some crazy numbers that we can't follow. And then we just get our net present value, right? And that present value is just going to be equal to the sum, sum of these numbers. So nine, great. This project is one that we would invest in, right? So maybe even then we want to look and see, well, what is the IRR? And the IRR is going to be equal to 20%. Okay, so there you have it. What we've done is a very, very simple look at one company's element. So we looked at one element of the income statement, which is the sales. We forecasted it at 8% per year, right? Because that's what we see in the past. And we think that's what the future will look like. 
we see one project, a product, or uh, you know, maybe it's a, a new geography, anything, whatever it is, that is going to incrementally increase by 5% per year our currently forecasted sales. So that is represented down here, 5% of what we already forecast. We get the present value by doing, you know, we first of all, we get the weighted average cost of capital, which we use to create the present value. And then we get the sum of those cash flow streams and we have our net present value. And then we use the, the face value streams and Excel to find out what the internal rate of return is. There you go. Hope that helps. Uh, talk to you again soon. Peace.